hey guys, why not game here today? And uh, I took the opportunity to go into the Wargaming Premium Shop and uh, pick up the USS Texas before it went off sale. Uh, I believe that this was a limited sale only. I don't know if it's still in the shop by the time I post this video. If it is, I highly encourage you to go and pick it up. Um, this thing is incredibly fun. It is a good ship. I believe within like my first five or six games, I got a 35 kill streak of anti-aircraft. Um, so you can imagine how mad that the opposing carrier was. S two carriers, actually. I'm pretty sure you can tell how mad that they were. But um, anyways, this thing is just incredible. Um, I mean, it's a fun ship. It's well-rounded. But let's go ahead and get into the ups and the downs. And uh, we'll start from the top. The survivability, it has 49,100 hit points. Uh, pretty much average for its tier. We'll go ahead and check out the New Yorker. We'll, we'll use the New Yorker for a, for a uh, comparison on, on uh, a couple of things with this ship. So, 4,200, so it's a, above average on that. Um, it's got 19 to 305 millimeters of armor, which is really good for its tier. Uh, really exceptional. Um, artillery. This is something that stands out with this ship. It's got uh, five sets of twin 356 millimeter cannons mounted here, here here in between these two structures I'm not gonna act like I know what this structure and this structure is and um, here and here now one thing that I want to point out to you guys real quick is cannon 3 this cannon right here can aim I believe it can aim because of its position it can aim a lot farther than cannon 4 can but Cannon 3 is limited. It, it can't aim as far as Cannon 5 can, which is weird. So Cannon 3 can aim farther than 4, but 5 can aim farther than 3, which is interesting when it comes to aiming uh, like uh, more more straight ahead, more, uh, more towards your frontal direction. Um, now, one other thing that I wanted to note about this ship real quick, or actually I'll wait till later to do that. Um, another thing about artillery that sh that I'm not going to skip over. You might have said, "Why not game? Why didn't you note it? Why didn't you note that before we headed on?" Um, secondary armament. Uh, yes, it's 127 millimeters, but oh boy, is it bad. <laughs> uh, six single 127 millimeter secondary cannons. Here you go. There's your view. One, two. Three, four, got to go right back around, five, and six. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty bad. I mean, that had to have some sort of downside, and you'll see what I mean by some sort of downside, because it has a lot of upsides. Um, it's just one of the two downsides of this thing. Main battery firing range is 15.6, and I think... Your other option with modifications goes up to 18.2-ish. Um, Anti-aircraft defense. Now this, this is outstanding. I mean, it's just beautiful. Uh, it has 32 single 20 millimeter cannons. There you go, 32 of those. 10 quad 40s. Oh, peppered around the deck. 10 single 76.2 millimeters. Oh man, it's just ready for action whenever it comes to anti aircraft. And and whenever I said another downside to this thing, this is what I meant. Maximum speed of 20.5 knots. It's not by any means fast. Uh, let me check out the New Yorker. I'm not sure how fast the New Yorker is. 
Yeah, I don't think the New Yorker's too fast either with its fully up. We're going to go ahead and see with its fully upgraded hull. Maximum speed is 18.4 knots, but yeah, for a premium ship, it's not too, too fast. It's one of its downsides, uh, and it does get up to tier 7s like the New Yorker, so you're going to be one of the slower ships getting fired at by cruisers, destroyers, of course, other battleships, uh, getting carriers, launching uh, torpedo bombers and uh, dive bombers at you, so it's definitely a, a negative, not a positive. Um and the concealment for the thing for the Texas is a uh, 15.5 kilometer rating radius detectability range by sea and 10.7 kilometer detectability range by air so that's that now I wanted to show you one thing on my commander I put one of the first things that I got before I put conce or concealment in the uh, acquisitions situational awareness, which I probably should have put first, was I put on um, I put on the secondary armaments basic firing training, and I will explain that in a minute. But I put it on because of the plus ten to AA efficiency. I'll explain that now. So. Main battery modification mark one is what I chose for the first set of perks. Now let me tell you guys what I wanted to do with the Texas. Now if you notice the Texas has a very, very, very big amount of anti aircraft guns. Now I put the main battery modification instead of the aircraft modification because if you get one of your aircraft, one of your anti-aircraft knocked out, I mean, you've got like another 50 of them on the, on the, on the Texas. I mean, it's just one out of like 40, one out of 50. So you're fine there. Secondaries, you've only got six of those. Those aren't really going to help you out anyways. So I went ahead and set the main battery modification mark one, but I'm not going to tell you what to set on yours. It's up to you. You set what you want to set. But personally, I think that main, main battery modification mark one is the best way to go. Oh. Next, I put anti-aircraft guns modification mark two. So that's why I mounted the AA range or the anti-aircraft commander perk. Now, with this perk that I put, I can reach up to about four kilometers, 4.1 kilometers, whenever anti-aircraft's coming in, and uh, my guns are targeting them and firing on them for, from about uh, 4.1 kilometers, which is really, really good in my opinion. So I don't really have to worry about them coming in and uh, getting to whatever distance that it is without that. I'm not too good with that math yet, and um, opening up on me at a closer range. Um, so I can keep them back and uh, get myself a little bit more time to start thinking and uh, get my brain working in the heat of battle and start turning and start reacting a little bit quicker to what I need to react to. So plus 20 to the maximum firing range. Your other options are artillery plotting room, of course, plus 16 to the main battery firing, main battery firing range. And that is the other really big option that is there. And that puts your gun up to 18 point I believe one or point two kilometer firing range now that is a really 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 big choice that I would say if you want to go anti-aircraft pick the AA gun modification mark two but if you really want that range pick artillery plotting room now sometimes I regret picking the AA modification mark two and I'll tell you why and it's because there's not always a carrier in the game so if there's not a carrier in the game it's basically a wasted perk uh, I'd totally stay away from the secondary battery modification mark 2 um, main battery modification 2 that's really up to you main battery loading time main battery traverse speed it's up to you if you want it to turn faster um, but I really think it's up to the artillery plotting room and the a modification mark 2 and uh, finally I didn't really want to have to choose between propulsion and steering gear, so I kind of just told, chose damage control system to get the risk of flooding and the risk of fire down. 
because it's not fun to be set on fire and uh, have those torpedoes set you in a flood situation. So other than that, yeah, this thing is just, I wanted to really focus it on my anti-aircraft, on my anti-aircraft games, on shooting down the carrier's anti-aircraft, on being a pesky battleship, on letting them know that I'm not going to be an easy target like the other people, um, that I'm going to be somebody that's going to be messed with. My speed may not be there, and uh, you may think that I may be focused on somebody else, but my anti-aircraft guns are going to be able to do something that my anti-aircraft guns are going to be able to do something that I may not have to be focused on 100% of the time. So, and that definitely is a uh, positive. It definitely helps out. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into it. And uh, I'll see you guys in a battle. Okay, so we are here on Two Brothers. This is a Tier 7 battle, which is pretty good. Um, of course, Tier 7 is the maximum, but there's only two Tier 7s on the enemy team that I see. Um, there's only two Tier 7s sixes that I see as well so, so like I said this is a pretty good one to be in for me um, and like I said there is downsides to having that carrier modification because the uh, I mean the anti-aircraft modification because there's no anti-aircraft so right off the bat we have four battleships including me and a pinky which is a pink person which is a uh, uh, team killer but I'm not gonna assume that he's a team killer I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that it was a scrape damage but I'm gonna see where my team battleships are going and I'm gonna roll with them assuming that's the right flank I hope I'm gonna go ahead and go at four speed and see where these guys are heading out to who's the top battleship here at the Nagato is that the guy who's right here on my right AP Congo, that the Nagato is way over there. New Mexico's right there. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna head with the APR Congo. Let's go ahead and get going full speed. Now, one thing that I do like about um, the regular Congo, which is the tier five counter variant, the non-premium tier five counter variant Japanese, uh, the Japanese battleship is that it has like a 24 23 to 25 kilometer speed and it gets there real quick man it, it jumps i was going i was in a game the other day and i was going real fast and somebody tried to cut in front of me and i had to hit a four reverse and the thing just slowed down almost instantly and then i cranked it back up to full speed and it went right back up to its top speed almost as quickly as it stopped so that's always a positive Looks like the other two battleships are heading the opposite direction, so I'm going to have to support this APR Congo. We're going to take shots at them. That would be like just behind them too. I should have aimed a little bit farther ahead. We're going to go ahead and check out that volley. Nice salvo too. Citadel hit on him. Good shots. That's going to put him out of the game shouldn't be sitting there like that you should not be sitting there picking on that destroyer you know better than that sir what are you a Cleveland class yeah you know better than that right off the bat we got a Citadel hit with the Texas this thing is not something to be taken lightly even though it is a tier 5 and a higher tier game these guns are not something to play with now it's not a toy uh, there goes another salvo. Oh, we aimed that one a little bit high, but we still got one hit with a thousand damage. Aim a little bit lower. Oh, we might do some collision here. Like that, like I said, this thing is a little bit harder to turn. We're gonna crank it back up to full speed. A little bit farther ahead and lower. Uh, three seconds left until we're loaded. Full salvo off there. We only got one shot off. That's not good. 
Now we gotta wait for a full reload time. Looks like we're cutting hard left because I don't want to be in the face of that uh, destroyer there, but uh, that guy's out of my fire range, so I'm going to go ahead and face that destroyer because I don't want that to happen to me. I'm going to flank around right. Coming into my firing range. There you go. This should hit. Good hits. Good hits. Took him out quickly. Cleveland class is going back to his port. And it looks like this guy is going to be a pain. We're going down to three force knots. And we're going to go ahead and turn left right into him. Hopefully we can uh, take them out with our front guns. What tier is this guy? Uh, he's only a tier 5, but that doesn't mean that we're going to underestimate him. Um, you saw how quickly he took out that other battleship. And it's only us and the guy to our right. I'm going to go ahead and slow down. The reason I'm slowing down is because I want this smoke to clear. And us going slower, I think, gives us a little bit more time to maneuver there we go looks like he's not over here anymore and we took out the cruisers so it's us and you buddy come on what are we doing here I'm gonna go ahead and get my guns turning right turn it back up to full speed okay the Cleveland's still with me the other guy turned back I don't want to be caught with my broadside to him, so I need to make sure that whichever direction I think he is, I keep my front to it. And I think he's... he's not around that corner. I think he's around one of these mountain passes, honestly. I think he's around the mountain pass that my guns are pointing at. That one, or that one right there. But I can't be too sure. We'd have seen him if he was out in the open, I'm sure. Especially with this Cleveland class right here. I don't want to just leave it alone because, I mean, it's a destroyer. I'm not, I don't want to have to hunt him down at the end of the game. And if I, like, turn my back to where I think he is, then I'm going to be insecure about it. And, uh, oh, he's across the map. Cool. Perfect. All right, cool. Just missed him, but one shot got on him. Didn't do any damage. I need my guns to turn to my left. Actually, keep them right. I'm going to turn hard left and stay on the outskirts of these mountain passes. Cool, the destroyer's out. That takes a big weight off my shoulder. I'm not going to have to switch to HE. Hey, buddy. It's your friendly neighborhood, Texas. Hit to Citadel, 12,000 damage. And now he knows I'm here. That gives me a big advantage over him, and I am still on full health. And it looks like the Cleveland class is still here to help out. Uh, we do have a Congo down the way. Uh, he has torpedoes. I might not be in his torp range. It looks like he's turning to get within torp range. Is what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking he's trying to do. Good dodge. This isn't my first rodeo. We put good shots into him. Uh, I'm gonna keep turning, gonna keep turning, gonna keep turning, put my salvo into him. Keep myself turning, keep myself turning, keep myself turning. We're only gonna take one. 
Good hit there, buddy. Good call. Good call. Good call. There we go. I knew that that's what he was doing. Oh, no. We lost our Cleveland, buddy. Don't worry. We'll finish the game off strong just for you, man. I'll go down fighting. I promise. I promise. For you, Cleveland. I'll go down fighting. And now it's me against them. Let's see if we can't get another Citadel. Uh, last thing that I noticed was that Congo. So um, I'm going to keep myself on the edges of these mountain passes is what the call I'm going to make. And uh, I try to do me backing him up. I have been spotted. And they know I'm sailing right out into the open. Here we go. What's that? Get off. Let's go ahead and return some fire. There goes the battleship. I knew that that's what it was. It's the Congo. Missed our whole salvo on that Kirov. And the cruisers are here now. Texas uses turn slightly. It's very effective. We're going to wait for our... We're gonna keep turning in. We're gonna wait for our salvo to come back. Keep turning in. Only light damage. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. We're gonna keep hammer hammering this Congo. We knocked out one of his primaries. That's good. It's like his first gun. Did a thousand damage. Whoo! Saved our hide. We were the last player there. I was going to try to focus down that Congo. 130,000 credits and 1,400 XP. Um, we did get top there on XP. It's unfortunate that our team could not take the win from the loss. Uh, 58,000 damage from, um, from that. And, uh, yeah. It was a good game all around. Sunk one ship. Tier 7 game. Got two sits. A lot of damage. Defended a base. Destroyed one ship. Got an incapacitation. 22 target hits. And all around, like I said, we did 58,684 damage. Good game. So you see what this game or what this ship can do. Downside is it's not fast. Positive side is it's got anti-aircraft. I'll go ahead and have to post some more videos of this thing with its anti-aircraft just chewing it up but um as for this one out of time guys um so i'm gonna go ahead and edit this one up this is a good game so i don't want to go ahead and post i don't want to i don't want to like i don't want to record another one and scrap this because this was a really good game i got a lot of credits out of it got a lot of xp did a lot of damage um I want to feature that, like, I want to show you guys that Cleveland, I want to show you what he did, um, the parts that he played, because he played a pretty good game from what I saw whenever I was paying attention to him, sorry about that, because I do, I do tunnel vision sometimes, <laughs> and uh, I don't want to, like, I don't want to scrap this, so, once again, thank you for watching this one, don't forget to share the channel with your friends and families, families, uh, don't forget to share the channel with your friends and family, uh, Twitter will be down in the description below. Uh, don't forget to go over to Twitter and follow me on there as I will be posting all my recent videos and updates. Um, sorry about the last video's quality on sound. Uh, I hope that you like this video. Um, there is a lot of work to be done in the future with sound quality. I'm going to be getting a new mic at some point, I'm sure. I don't know when that's going to happen, but... Who knows what's going to happen in the future. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video and sticking around with me on the channel. Every viewer counts. Uh, I appreciate everybody that watches the videos. It means a lot. I think we're at like 37, maybe 38 subscribers now. I'm going to have to check, but it means a lot. Um, even though we're a small channel, it's still equivalent to me. Even A small channel is equivalent to a big channel to me. It doesn't matter. Um, every sub counts. So don't forget to drop comments down below. I will respond to comments. Maybe we can have a conversation or whatever. Um, so yeah, thanks for...
watching this one once again. And uh, I'm out. Bye.